Hi, I'm Mike Ridley. Welcome to Power Boat Television. Have you ever wondered how the navigational charts are made and updated? Or how the navigational aids are planned and installed? Well, this week on the show, we'll spend some time with the men and women who put it all together. Early in the spring, we headed to Midland to join the Coast Guard vessel Gull Isle as she was working the eastern shores of Georgian Bay. After hauling our gear aboard, the crew cast off and the captain backed the Gull Isle off the pier. As the crew got everything ship shape and the engineer manned the helm for the run out, we got together with the Gull Isle's commanding officer, Stacy Trombley, to talk about her ship and its mission. She has a crew of five people, uh, three deckhands, a captain and an engineer. The spring commissioning program, uh, basically we go leave from Perry Sound and we come and do all the small craft channel buoys make sure they're all on position, uh, they're all in good repair. Uh, the ice tends to take them and move them and it will also sometimes crush the buoys or take the tops right off of the plastic ORTs. So we make sure everything is in good working order so that uh, when the pleasure boats come out, uh, all the channels are safely marked. To do the commissioning from, from down here in Port Severn right up to Killarney, is approximately a three-week program, two to three weeks, and obviously we're contending with weather the whole time. While Coast Guard crews ply the waters, teams of specialists work away in another division of Oceans and Fisheries Canada, the Canadian Hydrographic Service. Their work also starts out on the water with a fleet of survey vessels, both large and small. We met up with Andrew Lechek, the hydrographer in charge for Central and Arctic regions, to take a look at one of the smaller vessels, the Garnet. Needless to say, the sophistication of the survey vessel's data gathering equipment, sounding devices and extremely accurate DGPS systems is beyond impressive and would take the balance of the show to explain. While we hadn't come to CHS to cover chart making, rather we were here to follow the flow of chart changes having the opportunity to look at chart records from the early 1800s to hand-drawn 1950s issues to a recent 2001 digital survey of the same area. To take us through the updating process and the handling of notices to mariners, we hooked up with Laura Colomb of CHS. We get new information from a various, various different sources. Uh, Coast Guard sends us information through their link of their database to ours or if our revisory survey or our other survey parties go out into the field, they collect new data and they submit it into our data management center and that is where the data is cataloged and checked. We take the source documents, whether it's um, a cable from Hydro One or uh, a field sheet from a survey party, we take the documents and we review it against all of the paper products. We look to see if there's anything critical that has changed since the product was created. If something has changed, then we have to create a notice to Mariner to let the Mariners know that there's some critical changes out there that aren't necessarily going to be shown on this chart. Laura took us through the process in great detail, covering how changes and updates are passed on by the Coast Guard, both with documents and electronic database sharing. Corrections are made by hand on paper charts using Mylar overlays that are scanned for electronic data storage for incorporation into paper and electronic charts. All of this data is incorporated into notices to mariners or note mars. If the changes are significant, patches are created that are mailed out or available online to update your paper charts. Charlie 641, Georgia Bay. Red Spar Boy, Charlie 114, recorded off station south of advertised position. As you just heard, it's very important to listen to the notice to shipping from the Coast Guard on your VHF radio before heading out to find out if any of the nav aids are out of commission or off position, especially if you're boating early in the season before the Coast Guard's had a chance to commission the markers and move them back to the correct place. With that in mind, here's how they handle checking and relocating the markers. We have a chart system on board and it's uh, specifically built for the Coast Guard and uh, it also incorporates all of our uh, navigational positions. So every single buoy in the system has a uh, DGPS position and when we go to commission we make sure that every buoy is on that DGPS position. You can see here it's got its circle of position and uh, we'll match that with the ship's position and make sure that everything's on position.
What they're going to do is they're going to lift it on board and uh, they're going to put it inside the stopper, so the chain inside the stopper. And once uh, they get it on board, they're going to inspect the, the shackle and the counterweight and the chain for any uh, damage or wear. And then they also in inspect the uh, condition of the buoy. Make sure that everything's uh, in good repair for the season. And at the same time, we're also gonna make sure that it's on its charted position. After a few hours of inspecting markers, replacing chains and freshening decals, the crew of the Gull Isle came across a marker that really illustrates why the work they perform is so critical to our safety. Winter Ice had moved a major lateral buoy off station into the rocks and shoals, and it was quite a challenge to maneuver the Gull Isle in to retrieve it. With this distance in the shallow rock shoaled waters, all the crew could do was lift this marker aboard along with its anchor. Once the Gull Isle had repositioned to the advertised position some 470 meters away, the anchor was hung in the stopper and the buoy suspended over the water. When the correct position was established, the stopper was released and the buoy relaunched. You know, it's really easy as a recreational boater to take things for granted. Every time you go out in the water, you're using your charts or your electronic navigation. But this was a really interesting look-see behind the scenes with the Canadian Coast Guard and the Canadian Hydrographic Service as to the time and effort and skill that goes into keeping us safe on the waterways.